Good morning, everybody. So we come to our last session with a plenary talk. And the speaker of today is Kenji Uchino. I think everybody working in piezoelectric materials knows Kenji Uchino. Uh, he has a long and brilliant career in piezoelectric materials, particularly for actuators. And he had an academic career in Tokyo and later Pennsylvania State University. And he is uh, founder of the uh, piezoelectric actua actuator uh, center in uh, Penn State. So when I entered the field uh, with piezoelectric thin films to make piezoelectric MEMS, I mean, he was already there and recognized experts in many fields. Uh, among us, for instance, I s looked into his papers that um, teach, taught us uh, what is the connection between losses, dielectric, mechanical, and piezoelectric losses, and there is a connection between all of them. So he knows uh, uh, a big amount of knowledge, and he established also much of knowledge in the field of uh, ferroelectric piezoelectric materials. And so I ask him to come up and give his speech. Thanks a lot, Kenji. Thank you very much, Paul. It is my great pleasure uh, to provide a last IEEE UFAC Distinguished Lecture. Uh, I finished the 128 lectures, so this is 128th, okay? So the, for this uh, one and a half year period. So uh, th this time, I would like to introduce the uh, fractal aspect and the critical uh, length scale in ferroelectrics. I'm Ken Yusinov from Penn State University. So I will start from a background, amorphous ferroelectrics, and the second, crystalline size effect on ferroelectricity, and the third, particle grain size effect on ferroelectricity, and the fourth, uh, order, disorder, and domain size effect in ferroelectrics. And the final chapter is a fractal phenomena in ferroelectrics, and the summary and futures. Don't expect the very new things in my presentation. Uh, this is a Chinese character. Learning history and the predicting for the futures. Actually, interestingly, uh, my uh, publications uh, published in 70s and 80s, 90s, are widely cited in these several years. Because I'm a pre-Google age, therefore not many you know, papers are really on the website. That's why only several years dramatically increasing. So just notice that. And you need to make a 40 years time slip back, okay? And uh, uh, that period, I was associate professor. So uh, just imagine, not my face, but this face, uh, to listen my presentation, okay? So Penn State University is located at the geometrical center of the Pennsylvania State. And we are famous, particularly in these a couple of years, football, you know, the team. A football game is really high ranking in the national. So but, uh, short bio histories. I have been a university professor already 44 years, half in Japan and half at the Penn State. And also I have been operating uh, five uh, small businesses and uh, totally 21 years as a president or vice president. So I belong to the uh, business school at this moment. And uh, uh, government officers, seven years, half in Japan and also half in the United States. Most recently, I was a Navy officer. And uh, as uh, Paul already introduced me, I'm a kind of pioneer of the piezoelectric actuators. And the relax a single crystal PZN, PD, PMN. I'm uh, actually the discoverer. And, uh, Personally, I'm a Buddhist, then practitioner, and I'm making a Yaido or a Zazen or another personal issues. 
um, my eldest grandson just got into the university <laughs> this year, so uh, I'm now teaching a grandson, okay? What's the piezoelectric effect? Of course, uh, all you know, directly piezoelectric heating creates the charge, and uh, that creates uh, you know, pressure sensors, and also uh, piezoelectric energy harvesting systems recently. Converse piezoelectric effect, applying electric field, uh, ceramics will deform, okay? Uh, therefore, we can make the actuator, speaker, clock. And uh, I also had uh, 78 books so far, and the 16, 17 are textbook, and the periodic actuators. So uh, if you can, if uh, there, there's a student who'd like to learn materials-oriented ferroelectric devices, uh, this is the typical uh, class, uh, no, textbook, and micro-mechatronics for EE and me mechanical engineering, and the mathematical computer simulations, FEM, uh, I'm teaching these uh, courses, okay? So background, amorphous ferroelectrics. Uh, the initially, I will start uh, from a classification on randomness. Uh, compared to the perfect crystals, ionic crystals are yeah, usually the cell type randomness and also structural randomness. Uh, this include uh, like uh, the you know, amorphous. So a short range ordering, uh, this terminology comes out. To the contrary, co covalent crystals are topological or continuous randomness are available, but uh, in my presentation, I will focus on the ceramic, that means ionic crystals, so cell type and the structural type. When I was an associate professor, assistant professor, uh, 70s and 80s, amorphous, actually, uh, this uh, research fevered and boost. So uh, this shows some of already textbook came out and so on, but this basically disappeared uh, because the amorphous ferroelectrics doesn't exist, okay? So the, I'm showing here uh, the 80s papers, two of them, so uh, relatively highly cited. So critical particle size for the biome titanate was, uh, 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 you know, the initially reported, and the critical exponent Interestingly, in these five years, uh, this is dramatically increasing citations, okay? So the triggering paper for, to nanotechnology, and this is a kind of triggering paper to the uh, fractal analysis. Basically, any kind of research uh, has uh, some trend, 25 to 30 years, some trend. So the, so the presentation today is now slightly booming up. So uh, uh, that's why my papers, uh, old papers, are really cited widely, okay? Grain size, particle size effect. Probably most of you are familiar with these papers. Barium titanate with reducing a particle size uh, below the 0.1 uh, the, the micrometer. And the ferroelectricity will be completely lost. So Curie temperature is uh, gradually decreasing with decreasing, uh, uh, you know, the uh, the, uh, this uh, uh, particle size, okay? So critical size for ferroelectricity. This seems to be uh, really true. And the Curie Weiss law in relaxer ferroelectrics, as you are familiar with, a relaxation plus this uh, higher you know, temperature uh, permittivity. If you plot the Curie Weiss law, this is really big concave. It doesn't really fit well. Therefore. The uh, already 80s, uh, we started to put the gamma, so-called critical component, exponent, and uh, the, it all becomes a really beautiful state. The discussion will be held uh, later, and it fits very well. Okay? So uh, interaction among the micro domain, uh, this is the major reason. So the uh, final chapter, I will introduce a fractal, you know, the uh, analysis. So electrostative actuators, uh, these are my former bosses, uh, Electros and uh, Newnam. So uh, actually we discovered the electrostative materials, uh, which show the large, uh, you know, the displacement. So triggering paper for the piezoelectric actuator fevers. Uh, this is the end of the 70s. And uh, the PMNPT, uh, this creates a large, you know, the uh, displacement. Uh, under the electric field, sometimes higher than the PZD. So a large electric field induced strain, uh, this, 
and the small thermal expansion may be originated from my micro domains. And this was suggested in the early 80s. So construction of my presentation is shown here. Background just finished, and uh, a second amorphous, and uh, no ferroelectricity. And the third are the critical particle size for ferroelectric or antiferroelectric, so uh, critical thickness in thin films. This will be slightly indicated, but now uh, you can e easily learn uh, thin, thick film situations. So I will mostly skip. And the uh, order disorder versus ferroelectricity, short range order and microcluster, micro domain, and uh, relaxation, uh, this relation will be introduced. And the domain dynamics versus fractal behavior is the last chapter, okay? So uh, crystalline size effect. So if you take uh, some <laughs> materials course, uh, uh, this is from my class note, okay? Uh, why barium titanate uh, becomes a ferroelectric? I, I will skip uh, most of the introduction, perovskite, and the, uh, below uh, some certain temperature, Curie temperature, uh, cation anion is uh, simultaneously shifted, so spontaneous polarization happens. And you have learned the local field. Actually, uh, this is uh, the uh, uh, ferroelectric type materials. In that case, um, applying electric field E, uh, usually polarize, uh, dipole moment related electric field is small, but the really highly dense materials, in that case, actually uh, this is enhanced. So the materials inside is 10 times higher than the external electric field, such as the barium titanate case. This gamma is a Lorentz factor, isotropic materials is one, but the perovskite particular structures, uh, they, this becomes a 10, okay, very high. So according to this large, large, you know, the uh, uh, internal uh, local field, so a dipole interaction comes out. If we have a particular, you know, the polar polarizability alpha, alpha, gamma square, uh, this is the dipole interaction, which try to separate the cation and anion. And uh, uh, this is the sustained elastic uh, energies. And you can make a double minimum, okay? This is a typical you know, explanation to show the, so the ferroelectricity. So uh, large Lorentz factor is essential to become a ferroelectric. So uh, already 1980s, uh, the, uh, Dr. Lines explained uh, the possibility of amorphous ferroelectrics. So polarization is a, polari a, a polarizability multiplied by local field. And uh, in a short word, ga large gamma is required. However, amorphous, unfortunately, even a lead titanate, uh, if we make a amorphous, the theoretically gamma becomes one. So it doesn't become any ferroelectricity, okay? And particularly if you take uh, some uniaxial type dipole moment, it's totally impossible. And uh, so the, basically the uh, in amorphous uh, the, uh, the uh, research boosting, but the completely failing out less than 10 years, okay? So uh, after the 1990s, nobody is working with the, uh, the amorphous ferroelectrics. So amorphous doesn't make any uh, the ferroelectricity. That's the situation. But uh, in parallel, uh, started from uh, amorphous lead titanate, gradually increasing the temperature and annealing, making a small particles. So amorphous are uh, the PB and O distance is quite small, 2.3 angstrom, but the crystalline is 2.6 to 2.8 angstrom. Therefore, if you create uh, some particle of the uh, a crystalline particle surrounded by the amorphous, this squeezes dramatically. So high, you know, compressive pressure uh, is uh, the created. That makes uh, the uh, more difficult for becoming a uh, ferroelectricity. Okay. So uh, with increasing uh, annealing, uh, uh, you know, the temperature and the time, uh, you can increase the grain size not the grain size, uh, crystalline size, gradually. So uh, parallelly, you can find uh, a sort of a uh, Curie, you know, the uh, permittivity peak around here, okay? Therefore, you can create a ferroelectricity inside this, uh, you know, the already crystalline part. But you can find the 
you know, the federal electricity needs minimum 0.1 micrometer, and this is 19, uh, 1970s result. So 0.1 micrometer range is rather critical, okay? And the pa particle size, uh, grain size effect on federal electricity will be taught. So without making any amorphous, uh, we will make a small uh, grain size materials. So the uh, Dr. Yamaji's group uh, reported uh, in uh, 1977, the uh, biome titanate, original one, uh, with reducing a grain size, uh, they reported that much smaller, like a, a displacement. But they utilized the displosium doping to make a fine grain. So a dopant occasionally changes the performance, like a hard PGT or a soft PGT. So a dopant should not be utilized to make a different grain size. Therefore, they, after getting into 80s, uh, our group uh, utilized the PLGT and the making a different grain size uh, beautifully by changing uh, just a sintering temperature. No, a uh, sintering time, okay? And uh, with increasing uh, grain size, uh, the, uh, the, you can easily find that uh, displacement dramatically enhances. So pure grain size effect was observed, but still sintered materials, internal stress exists uh, due to the sintered ceramics. So we try to make uh, separate particles uh, to determine the federal electricity. That is a uh, risk to the, uh, you know, this uh, particle size dependence of barium titanate. So with reducing a uh, particle size, and barium titanate. Actually, in the middle of the 80s, first, like a sol uh, solder or alkoxide, this fine particle technology is reaching. So we started to use uh, these uh, small particles and making uh, small particles and uh, reducing this. So we found that actually uh, the, the tetragonality is just gradually shifting to the lower temperature without changing. And the first phase transition, like uh, a drastic change is maintained even for a small electric field. So uh, basically, something creates smaller gra gra uh, you know, particle size, creates uh, some hydrostatic pressures to reduce this, you know, the Curie temperatures. That's our speculation. Uh, critical size for the federal electricity. So we uh, expand to the late 80s uh, the barium strontium titanate, barium titanate to the lead titanate. So Curie temperature is uh, differs from uh, lower than 100 degree uh, up to the 500 degree. So accordingly, we determine the critical particle size. Uh, the, as I told you, barium titanate 0.1 micrometer, uh, but the 0.2 is a lower Curie temperature, and 0.02 is the lead titanate. So with increasing the Curie temperature, we need, to, uh, uh, we need to make a smaller particles. Because, as you are familiar with, a Curie temperature shift is hydrostatic pressure, the case 50 degrees C per one gigapascal. So large internal uh, stress, a hydrostatic pressure, uh, to reduce the 500 to down to the room temperature is quite large, you know, pressure is required. So by taking this, we consider some of the, uh, the, the uh, proportional parameter, uh, hydrostatic pressure inversely proportional to the, uh, this radius, okay? Uh, so gamma is beautifully you know, 50, around the 50s, plus minus less than 10% for any kind of, you know, ferroelectric materials. So that is the 1990s. So we speculated uh, the, some of the hydrostatic pressures. So in my presentation, uh, in, my pa in our paper here, uh, we mentioned the surface tension-like model. But you don't need to keep a real surface tension. Core shell particle model or surface area doesn't matter. At least you can calculate uh, some large, you know, the hydrostatic pressure inside uh, this makes, okay? Anyhow, this is a almost a constant value. So why this constant is really constant? So uh, we need to wait uh, some physics person's explanation. So compressive pressure is higher uh, uh, for the smaller particle size. This seems to be really true. So we also parallelly working in the 1990s, uh, PGD, uh, 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 thick film, basically. Our case is two micrometer to three, three micrometer to make a blood test uh, in collaboration with Amron Corporation, uh, early 2000 or late uh, 1990s. We started to commercialize this 
but unfortunately, Japanese industries became into the economical recession, so this uh, commercial product already disappeared. So I will show you some of the, uh, just a comment for this, I uh, think, stick film. So in 1990s, a uh, one micrometer to 10 micrometer range, so with reducing a thickness, a dielectric permittivity, or a D constant is decreasing. After getting into the 2010, uh, the uh, 0.1 micrometer to one micrometer, uh, uh, again, uh, gradually decaying dielectric permittivity or D constant, okay? So uh, 0.1 micrometer, uh, still uh, ferroelectricity and piezoelectricity exist. So how thin is a critical thickness? Uh, therefore, most recent papers, uh, this is intriguing. Less than 10 nanometer, a couple of you know, the unit cells still create uh, some of the ferroelectricity like. So I uh, believe or not, uh, uh, this is the waiting period a housing create a real ferroelectricity. So ferroelectricity may be observed down to the two to three unit cells. But another uh, intriguing point for your new generation, uh, string or needle. So uh, this is one dimensional. Therefore, what is a critical size? Uh, you had better really uh, work on it and the theoretician needs to verify it. Uh, order disorder domain uh, size effect. Chapter, okay? Complex perovskite, uh, probably you are familiar with the original uh, uh, perovskite structure. I'm showing the corner for B size. So uh, B1, B2, two materials. Uh, if you put the B1, B2, B1, B2, uh, this is so-called one, two, one uh, ordered structure. And uh, the, if you put the one third, two thirds, so B1, B2, B2, B1, B2, B2, uh, this is one, two, two order structures. So uh, some of the examples are shown here. So uh, interestingly, uh, this ordered complex perovskite uh, is uh, always creating a ferroelectric, and the ordered materials are uh, usually uh, gives uh, anti-ferroelectricity. And the uh, one to two order, uh, this is nonpolar. And uh, uh, the nonpolar, and this is popularly utilized for the gigahertz, like a microwave, uh, micro uh, the wave range, you know, dielectric materials. So uh, the reason is not completely clarified, so we need to wait a physicist uh, a beautiful explanation on this. So order or disorder, uh, as you can roughly imagine, the modeling energy or polarization energy and the displacement energy, uh, that means uh, the two different ions size. So elastic sum energy is created. So one example is the strontium ion tantalate. In that case, modeling energy is definitely one-to-one. -one. Our order is lower, okay? The, however, polarization energy and the displacement energy, this order is better. Therefore, totally, you know, the, uh, this becomes disorder. And this is a typical calculation to estimate the, uh, the order or disorder. So uh, in our 70s papers, okay, Para, uh, the ferroelectric uh, uh, lead iron tungstate and the uh, lead cobalt tungstate, these are really, uh, this is one to one order, uh, this is random. So uh, we can make uh, the gradual change of the random to the ordered structure. So ordered structure is definitely anti ferroelectric stable. So the, in my papers, they are using uh, phenomenologies. Basically, what you need to consider is uh, this uh, coupling. Order increases sub lattice coupling. Uh, in that case, uh, we can make uh, anti ferroelectric first, and below is the ferroelectric. Uh, this is a simulated phase diagram. Uh, this is an experimental result. So, ferroelectric, anti ferroelectric, okay? So, anti -ferro uh, the ferroelectric is more stable. Uh, that is generally true. So, the Navasetta's paper. Actually, the, uh, this is her PhD thesis uh, when I was at Penn State, okay? The, uh, the, she created a beautiful explanation for this. Scandium tantalate, quenching uh, usually creates a disorder. And if you need it, ordered structure happens. Ordered, uh, very high temperatures, and uh, you know, a very sharp phase tension comes. 
So the contrary, this order is uh, very gradual or diffuse phase transition. So ferroelectric and prehistoresis, low temperature phase transition. And ordered, usually high temperature, and uh, she observed anti ferroelectric like double hysteresis below this. Of course, much lower uh, ferroelectricity comes out again. So basically, ordered materials, anti ferroelectric and the lower temperature is ferroelectric. Uh, this is really the exp explainable by using uh, uh, the phenomenology. So ordered, sharp uh, phase transition and anti ferroelectric, and all, uh, disordered, uh, usually diffuse phase transition. So ordered, disordered. Uh, the, uh, we presented the iron rattling model at that time. So you don't need to consider any polarized state. Uh, this is like a dipole, uh, you know, just uh, the, uh, the paraelectric state. Ordered, disordered. What's the difference? How about the Curie constant or the permittivity? In that case, we apply some certain electric field. So uh, here, this order, you can find a smaller ion that has a usually large valence. It's easily moving without uh, distorting any, you know, uh, this, this frame. Therefore, much larger permittivity is obtained. So the, uh, the, this order should create a larger Curie-wise constant. To the contrary, ordered materials uh, to create a large displacement, Q values, uh, electroselective constant, and to create a, po a, a certain polarization without changing, making a, a big distortion around the frame, we cannot make uh, any polarization. Therefore, large Q is expected, large C is expected. Therefore, we tabulated lots of you know, the samples uh, for the ferroelectric, antiferroelectric, nonpolar, all, and the uh, electrostatic uh, uh, co constant and uh, uh, the Curie-wise constant is really measured. So uh, these are large and small are one order of ma magnitude difference. This is also one order of magnitude difference. But if you make a product of electrostatic constant and Curie-wise constant, this is beautifully around the three plus minus less than uh, five percent. Okay. So again, uh, we are waiting some physical uh, you know, uh, f uh, theoretician uh, to explain uh, this constant rule. Okay? So uh, before moving in into the fractal or uh, the uh, Curie-Weiss law or uh, critical exponent, I would like to introduce a modified Curie-Weiss law presented by the Smolenskis. Okay? A uh, usual Curie-Weiss law, uh, no, uh, a a any person knows this. The like uh, PMN, magnesium and uh, uh, the niobium, uh, this, uh, uh, the uh, rate, ratio is slightly fluctuating depending on the each local position. If you consider, and uh, according to the, this uh, fluctuation of the composition, uh, he uh, uh, you know, uh, put the assumption for the Curie-wise temperature is changing around here. So Curie temperature distribution here to here around here. Therefore, he supports the Gaussian distribution of the Curie temperature. Accordingly, he de derives the uh, 1 over epsilon uh, and the temperature square relation, not uh, just uh, directly uh, the temperature proportion. Okay? But uh, we, we worked on the, uh, the uh, normal uh, molecular field theory 1 and the Smolensky 2 neither will fit, so convex or concave, uh, neither fits well. Of course, this seems to be rather uh, uh, linear. Therefore, we started to work for the critical exponent. Okay? Uh, similar you know, period at the end of 70s, uh, order to disorder. Uh, this is a computer simulation. At that time, we don't have a beautiful computers, so we need to take a long time to calculate only this. So short range order and long range order and disordered. Or ordering parameter was changed and the computer simulated. In that case, uh, you can easily find that. The, uh, uh, this is the, the ordered structure surrounded by the disordered structure. So ordered island seems to be uh, created. So the, uh, the practically uh, using the electron microscope, a uh, Krauss group uh, really beautifully shows the ordered cluster here. Okay? 
So ordered cluster in this ordered matrix. Uh, this is the situation. So if you believe the uh, ordered structure has a higher uh, transition temperature, and uh, the, this ordered part is lower transition temperature, and this is really wide range, this may be uh, the origin of the diffuse phase transition. Okay? With the increase in electric field, the narrowly divided domains Basically, this is a barium titanium. Single domain Beautiful. As so just remember that a domain escape, is moving one-dimensionally in these directions, okay? So just remember this, one-dimensional motion and completely disappeared and monodomain state comes. Of the crystal somewhat change. So domain wall moves one-dimensionally. Second is the PGN single crystals. Uh, this is a pure sing, uh, PGN single crystal at room temperature. You can find the spindle-like domains. It doesn't become a real monodomain state. So you can find the uh, black becomes white, white becomes black. So domain wall moves two-dimensionally. So a spindle-like becomes a slim or fat, two-dimensionally moving, and the length is almost a constant, okay? So the PGL, by applying electric field, uh, with increasing electric field, we can make a, a visible macroscopic domains. And micro to macro domain growth happened with increasing electric field. So we found that very intriguing point. Unpolled, as you are familiar with, relaxation and the dielectric uh, loss is quite large around here, around the room temperature. However, once we pull, and at room temperature, this is stabilized. In that case, we found that uh, the relaxation totally disappears and the dielectric uh, tangent delta is all, almost uh, you know, one order of magnitude smaller. So very low happened. And with increasing temperatures, uh, this range is like a, a macro to macro, another phase transition, okay? Domain-related phase transition happened. Macro domain state exhibits the low dielectric relaxation and the low dielectric loss. And this is a very intriguing point, okay? So all the origin of the dielectric relaxation in this case is micro domain interactions, okay? And uh, because of lack of time, I, I will skip a giant electrostriction. So a large electric uh, field induces strength, small thermal expansion, maybe also originated from a microdomain. So let's move to the last chapter, a fractal phenomena in ferroelectrics. Background of a fractal phenomena. The fractal is really booming up also 80s, but the younger generation may not know this, so I will start from a snowflake model. So a smaller and larger, you can find still the hexagonal this is symmetries, okay? Even the water molecule doesn't have a hexagonal symmetry, okay? So fractal means a self-similarity. So uh, uh, by taking a fractal dimensions, so a uh, scaling law, lambda is provided. So interestingly, uh, the parameter uh, may follow the power law, and the power law P cannot be non-integer, okay? Uh, can be in non-integer, so it cannot be integer. So uh, uh, this creates a kind of a critical exponent concept, okay? Uh, derivation, I will skip it. So a fractal dimension, uh, how we can determine it? Uh, this shows the two-dimensional. So how many numbers are uh, roughly R power of two? So Euclidean completely filled in is two. Uh, uh, however, if you create a, a snow a flake like, okay, some particular points must be really eliminated. So uh, this is a cluster cluster interaction. If you find the cluster cluster interaction, uh, D is ob observed uh, like uh, less than two, okay? So uh, as long as we can measure the fractal dimensions, uh, smaller than particular values, uh, we speculate the cluster cluster interaction at least. And the domain dynamics in uh, ferroelectrics, uh, this is cited from uh, Dr. Shure's paper, and they worked for the uh, scattering light uh, intensity measurement, and this is PLZD. They reported around the uh, uh, fractal dimension 1.7. Just remember this num number I will introduce later again. 
So、uh, he suggests the micropolar region still exists here. And this is a similar、uh, light scattering method、uh, reported by Cole Eder、uh, rather recently and on the PML. They reported the、uh, fractal dimension is around 2.2、uh, around the room temperature. Again, I will use this number later. So, critical exponents in permittivity.、Uh, basically, the inverse permittivity is proportional to the temperature power of gamma. So, molecular field theory,、uh, you are usually familiar with this、uh, uh, situation. Therefore, Q d e v i c e law,、uh, gamma is equal to 1 is、uh, actually presented. So,、uh, gamma is equal to 1 is usually true for the ordered, completely ordered structure or perfectly random structure such as PZT. However, Z and T has、uh, some interactions and、uh, the situation is different. Gamma is higher than 1. Uh, for the critical exponent、uh, can change only when short range order or correlation between the neighboring ion exists, such as PMN. Okay?、Uh, so long uh, the, uh, the ordered cluster and the disordered cluster both exist. Unfortunately, f e r r o e l e c t r i c areas,、uh, fractal dimension, and uh, uh, this uh, like a critical exponent, this correlation has not been completely clarified yet. So, I will show you just an a n a l o g y from a ferro magnetics due to the lack of time, just showing the final result. Smaller cluster usually diffuse phase transition uh, terms uh, for the,、uh, the Heisenberg、uh, exchange coupling. But you may know the ferro、uh, magnetic materials, amorphous ferro magnetic materials, are widely commercially available. This is totally different from、uh, ferro electric, like a Coulombic. You know, the energy stabilization. So, uh, uh, the permeability or susceptibility, magnetic susceptibility,、uh, here, the molecular field, so large single crystal light, in that case, the gamma is equal to 1. However, low dimension coupling、uh, approaching to the、uh, 1.75.、Uh, this is a theoretical evaluation. And uh, parallelly, uh, the uh, fractal dimension. Uh, is uh, actually、uh, decreasing. So, critical gamma increases with the fractal dimension decreases. This is the,、uh, the, the speculation from a、uh, you know, magnetic medium. So, q d e v i c e law, again, I'm showing multiple times here. As I told you,、uh, it doesn't really follow the q d e v i c e law, so it doesn't fit. So, the, we integrate the gamma and the volume titanate to the PGL. You can find the beautiful all linear relations, but just by changing a gamma value. s、okay? So、uh, this is a temperature dependence, and it fits very well. Interaction among the microdomain in a r e l a x e r f e r r o e l e c t r i c s may be true. So, of course, temperature itself is not that quite sure. So, we worked on the hydrostatic pressure dependence. Similar to the temperature dependence, The, we observed some of the irregular, you know, the concave shape here. Therefore, we again fit to the log log scale to determine the gamma. So, uh, 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 pot potassium tantalic n i t r a t e this is beautifully one, and the PML is 1.7 like, okay? So, final、uh, table temperature dependence、uh, gamma and the hydrostatic pressure gamma. Bime titanate,、uh, 1.08 or 1.0, they're almost the same number. And also PML, 1.64, 1.66. Okay? You can easily understand the diffusiveness or relaxation.、Uh, you can,、uh, this、uh, gamma value is a kind of parameter to evaluate the diffusiveness of the,、uh, uh, the you know, transitions. So, non integer power law uh, that uh, uh, provides、uh, some of the indication for fractal D. De de、uh, you know. So, a gamma increase means fractal D decrease. This is expected. So how to measure the、uh, you know, fractal dimension uh, uh, macroscopically? Instead of light scattering, we started to use acoustic emission. Of course, my former company is、uh, the 
uh, you know, the NF corporation, that is the, uh, the AE sensor companies. We had the sophisticated AC sensors. So AE is measured, so even the deformation happens, we can measure the, uh, the acoustic emission. So acoustic emission under the voltage, basically acoustic emission can be observed, only displacement increase, decrease no acoustic emission. And more than this, again, uh, increase. Uh, and here, uh, this decreasing point, no acoustic emission, and on the increasing point, you can find the acoustic emission. Okay? So this is usually called the Kaiser effect. The electrostatic materials, this is intriguing. No domain reversal uh, in the macroscopically, but the microscopically, uh, this may work. So uh, this is the displacement curve. Acoustic emissions are almost proportional to this acoustic you can find a uh, you know, displacement curve, okay? So AE is observed in proportion to the displacement. And uh, this is rather intriguing, soft PLDT materials. This part is a domain uh, reorientation related, one acoustic emission, another one is already saturated, so uh, this is a piezo like acoustic emission. So uh, there are, uh, we can separate uh, the three different acoustic emissions. Domain reversal and the piezo restriction, different acoustic emission. Okay? Again, I don't have time to explain the fractal dimension uh, analytical solution, just to believe our you know, the theoretical derivation. Okay? So uh, the final result, acoustic emission counts versus the acoustic uh, emission signal threshold. That means energy, acoustic emission energy is higher and higher, and this is lower. So initially, when we work just the domain reorientation itself, this seems to be a logarithmic uh, decrease. That corresponds to the uh, fractal dimension one. And the slope for already saturated part is a piezo restriction. Uh, therefore, uh, domain re uh, the uh, fractal dimension is 2.8, close to three. And the interesting situation is PMLPT, okay? PM and PT are exactly two, okay? And uh, you remember the Coreda's data, PMN, uh, the uh, uh, fractal dimension is 2.2. Our is slightly modified, but rather close. So electrostative type is roughly around two. So the, uh, this is a soft PLZD. So some of the slope creates the fractal dimension 1.7. And if you remember the, uh, Dr. Schur's result, 1.7, exactly, accidentally, exactly the same value, okay? So the, this is the final uh, summary. So the main reversal, uh, fractal dimension is one. As you remember, the domain is moving one dimensionally. Therefore, it seems to be a, a, this a, AE origin is one dimensional motion, okay? And the electrostriction to the contrary, as you remember, uh, this uh, domain, Spindle-like domain, fat or slim, so two-dimensional moving. Therefore, electrostriction, uh, we can expect a uh, uh, fractal dimension too. Piezo restriction already saturated. Therefore, uh, the extension shrink is all three-dimensional moving. Therefore, fractal dimension is expected close to three. Okay? This is a visualization of fractal dimension. So if you measure the fractal dimension, we can speculate the domain motions, okay? So summary and futures. Summary and future. First, background, amorphous phalloelectrics. Unfortunately, uh, the, uh, the cell type and the structure. Unfortunately, there's no amorphous phalloelectrics. So crystalline size effect. Phalloelectricity disappears in amorphous due to the small Lorentz factor, okay? And the particle size, uh, critical size, uh, for the fellow electricity, less than uh, uh, 0.1 micrometer or 100 nanometer, three-dimensionally. And the constant surface tension energy, uh, you may say just a hydrostatic energy, okay? Uh, the perovskite, uh, this is almost a constant, interestingly. The similar uh, uh, consideration on the thin, thick films, okay? However, the critical thickness seems to be very low, okay? And the domain size effect on ferroelectricity, order disorders. So order becomes a, a anti-ferroelectric, the disorder becomes a ferroelectric, 
and the dialectic relaxation is originated from a micro domain interactions. And the final uh, fractal dimension, uh, the permittivity versus temperature, uh, if you plot the gamma values, uh, you can evaluate uh, this is relaxer type or normal type and so on. And higher critical exponent gamma is related with a micro domain interaction. And the fractal dimension one for the macro domain reversal, two is electrostriction. If I say the spindle like, uh, you know, the small uh, the, uh, domains. And uh, D is close to three, is a pure piezo restriction. So I will repeat again. Learning history, I talked almost all 80s and 90s but you can find some of the data you haven't really seen it because we are the pre-Google age, okay? So predicting for the future and take comprehensive and the systematic approach, then make your own research strategy or stories. That's my final remark for the younger generation. Thank you very much for your attention. Kenji, I thank you very much for your great talk. It's really uh, very remarkable, the width of knowledge and the depth of knowledge. <laughs> overview of what is going on in these various fields. Are there any questions? Actually, this is not my current research topic. You may know I'm an actuator guy. We are producing a lot of products. I have never explained in my presentation any applications, OK? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> OK. Any question? Yes? Great. Uh, it's a great talk. Thank you very much, Professor Vuccino, for your significant contribution in the histories of uh, ferroelectric development. Uh, I feel that uh, you not talk so much about the, the future or your uh, view about the future of uh, ferroelectrics. With uh, uh, today's the power of computation, do you think most of the puzzles that uh, you are uh, you experienced before can be much easily to solve with uh, the the powerful computation today? Uh, yes or no? Okay. I'm also the computer simulator. Uh, I'm teaching a FEM system. So as long as there are so many software for the FEM, my company seems to be the top at this moment, but we still find the discrepancy, okay? Therefore, computer simulation is based on the what kind of model you will really create, okay? So according to the, uh, the com so computer simulation is not the, <laughs> how can I say, a, a total you know, result created. So depending on the each professor's or uh, engineer's you know, the model. So computer simulation depends on total modeling itself. So it doesn't create any one. So uh, uh, usually research, and the uh, breakthrough discovery happened first. And to explain it, computer simulation usually attack. So uh, I'm not so optimistic to create a completely new product or two materials by using just a computer. <laughs> OK? So uh, the device designing, of course, the, our computer simulation Previously, we made a lot of prototype, like 100 pieces in our generations, and making all the plot. But now, uh, my students will create only three products, and uh, others are all computer simulated. If the top and this and this are really beautiful fit, they will write the thesis again, okay? Therefore, research periods are dramatically shrunk by using a computer simulation. That's actually true. But the real, you know, the world, brain is most important. How to model it, otherwise computer will provide, provide a different wrong directions, okay? 
Any other question? Well, yeah, I think we have to close. The time is over. Thanks again to Kenji Gino. Thank you very much. <laughs>